In Galatians 3, 3, Paul writes, "'Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh?' I have been pointing out to you over the last few weeks that one of the most serious threats against the church today, one of the most serious threats against Christians, is this new kind of sanctification effort without the Holy Spirit. The church has bought into human pragmatism, ideas, techniques. The church has bought into psychology. These things are offering false and weak and worthless solutions to the troubles and burdens of believers. We have become the victim of humanistic ideas, therapies, human efforts, all kinds of human principles, human devices to try to accomplish spiritual goals. That is not unlike the Galatians who had begun in the power of the Spirit and were trying to perfect themselves by their own effort. Now, just to remind you of what we have already covered, we noted that we did all begin in the Spirit. All of us came into spiritual life through the agency of the Holy Spirit. We were convicted of sin by the Holy Spirit. We were brought to repentance by the Holy Spirit. Faith was energized in us by the Holy Spirit so that we would respond to the preaching of the gospel. We were then brought to the place where we would submit to the Lordship of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And then we we were regenerated by the Holy Spirit, that is, we were recreated into new life. At the time in which the Spirit of God regenerated us, He came to indwell us. By His agency, we were baptized into the body of Christ. He gave us spiritual gifts. He then sealed us for eternal life and then separated us from sin. All of that is the work of the Spirit, a monumental work that lifted us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. So we live a spiritual life. We are not of this world, though we are in this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. And as a result of this heavenly life and this spiritual kind of existence, We cannot begin in the Spirit and be perfected by the flesh. And so we've been saying all these weeks that it is essential for us to live in the Spirit. Therein lies the solution to everything. Now remember what we said, that the Spirit offers us all of the perfecting resources that we need. We said, for example, the Spirit brings us into intimacy with God, where is all the resource found. The Spirit illuminates the Scripture so we know exactly what the Word of God calls us to do. The Spirit then strengthens us in the inner man to do that. The Spirit glorifies Christ to us, both as our authority and our example, so we know how to live and whom to be like. The Spirit then personally guides us as He moves within us through our conscience to do God's will. The Spirit then ministers to us through other Christians as He comes to us through them to touch our lives and bring us strength. And then finally we said, the Spirit intercedes for us so that all things work together for good in our lives. Now, those are the ministries that the Spirit of God offers the believer by which we are perfected in the Spirit. How ridiculous, how foolish, and how bewitched we would have to be like the Galatians to stoop to a lower level and having begun in the Spirit, then try to live in the flesh. And so in verse 12, God says, "'Be appalled, O heavens, at this, and shudder, be very desolate,' declares the Lord." Then verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. Here they are. Number one, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The first foolish thing that Israel did was to forsake the fountain of living waters. That is the true God who was the source of everything. That is not unlike what the church has done today. 
You remember in John 7, Jesus said, whoever receives me, drinks of me, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And in saying that, he was referring to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who would be the divine resource to provide all the water that a thirsty soul could need to a broken cistern that could hold no water, that promised everything and provided nothing. And so I see the same thing today in the bewitching of the church. The church has entered into the folly of turning from the Holy Spirit, who is the stream of living water, and has looked in the empty buckets of psychology, pragmatism, humanism, in order to discover the things that it thinks will be able to meet its own spiritual needs. How absolutely foolish. The conclusion of all of this is that we must live on the spiritual level. We must live in the power of God. We must cease to do what we are warned not to do in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, quench not the Holy Spirit. We must cease to do that. We are quenching the Spirit. We are pushing Him aside. We are treating Him with indifference. Secondly, we must not grieve the Spirit, Ephesians 4.30. The church today, I believe, is both quenching the Holy Spirit by refusing to respond to His leading and grieving the Holy Spirit by sin and disobedience. We must cease to quench and cease to grieve and begin to move in the power of the Spirit or the church will get worse and worse as it struggles to offer human solutions to spiritual problems. But I told you last week that the remaining question in our study is, how do we do this? How do we live on the spiritual level? Brings us to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. We'll call this the command. We'll call this the command. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. There it is. That is the baseline truth for all Christian living. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. What a statement. What a statement. Since all of our problems and everything in life that isn't right and for which we seek a solution in the world so very often is all caused by the flesh then whatever means by which we can overcome the lust of the flesh becomes the solution to everything. This is no oversimplification, dear friends. This is the Word of God. This is the mind of God. And the Spirit is in us, and the Spirit is moving and leading, and we are simply to respond moment by moment, step by step, day by day, walking by means of the power and direction of the Spirit. That's it. Just walk by the Spirit in an attitude of submission to the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that involve? Well, pragmatically, it involves two things, really. It involves studying the Word of God so that you know the mind of the Spirit and the will of the Spirit. Ephesians 5 says, be being kept filled with the Spirit. And a parallel passage, Colossians 3.16 says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Being filled with the Spirit is the same as letting the Word dwell in you richly. Because as the Word dominates your thinking, it dominates your action. As the Word moves through your heart and mind, it is that by which the Spirit of God directs your life. So as you spend time in the Word and as you spend time in prayer, communing with the living God and building an intimate relationship with the Spirit of God, as you feed on the Word and as you commune with God, you are in the position where the Spirit of God can move you down the path walking as He wants you to walk. Now, the concept of walking really does mean daily conduct. There's never a time in your life when you just arrive and from then on you're permanently spiritual. I do not believe the Bible teaches some eradication of the sin nature in this life or some second work of grace or some perfectionism. Uh, When you have reached that, you never sin again. Not at all. It is a daily, moment-by-moment walk, and it comes and goes dependent upon our submissiveness. By the way, if any one of us says that we have no sin, we make God a liar. We never overcome sin totally, but we can overcome it 
as a pattern of life by walking by the Spirit. That's a basic, daily, practical life pattern. And I say it again, the only way you can do it, the only way you can walk routinely in the Spirit of God is to have spiritual thoughts. And the only way you can have spiritual thoughts is to be communing with the living God in an intense and continual prayer attitude and being fed continually on the Word so that your thoughts are God's thoughts. We never arrive at some moment. You see, it's just a daily thing. And everything in life that isn't right and for which we seek a solution in the world so very often is all caused by the flesh, then whatever means by which we can overcome the lust of the flesh becomes the solution to everything. This is no oversimplification, dear friends. This is the Word of God. This is the mind of God. And the Spirit is in us. And the Spirit is moving and leading, and we are simply to respond moment by moment, step by step, day by day, walking by means of the power and direction of the Spirit. That's it. Just walk by the Spirit in an attitude of submission to the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that involve? Well, pragmatically, it involves two things, really. It involves studying the Word of God so that you know the mind of the Spirit and the will of the Spirit. Ephesians 5 says, be being kept filled with the Spirit. And a parallel passage, Colossians 3.16 says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Being filled with the Spirit is the same as letting the Word dwell in you richly. Because as the Word dominates your thinking, it dominates your action. As the Word moves through your heart and mind, it is that by which the Spirit of God directs your life. So as you spend time in the Word and as you spend time in prayer, communing with the living God and building an intimate relationship with the Spirit of God, as you feed on the Word and as you commune with God, you are in the position where the Spirit of God can move you down the path walking as He wants you to walk. Now the concept of walking really does mean daily conduct. There's never a time in your life when you just arrive and from then on you're permanently spiritual. I do not believe the Bible teaches some eradication of the sin nature in this life or some second work of grace or some perfectionism. Uh, when you have reached that, you never sin again. Not at all. It is a daily, moment by moment walk and it comes and goes dependent upon our submissiveness. By the way, if any one of us says that we have no sin, we make God a liar. We never overcome sin totally, but we can overcome it as a pattern of life by walking by the Spirit. That's a basic, daily, practical life pattern. And I say it again, the only way you can do it, the only way you can walk routinely in the Spirit of God is to have spiritual thoughts. And the only way you can have spiritual thoughts is to be communing with the living God in an intense and continual prayer attitude and being fed continually on the Word so that your thoughts are God's thoughts. We never arrive at some moment. You see, it's just a daily thing. 